गुड इवनिंग ऑल गुड इवनिंग मनीष सो प्लीज लेट मी नो एम आई ऑडिबल एंड स्क्रीन इज विजिबल so this is our last lecture on digital logic so if we do a recap that what we did starting from we have did boolean algebra k map combinational circuit and today we will be doing sequential circuit so more or less we have covered the whole digital logic but obviously in this short time we could not cover in more details okay so if you are just uh, doing revision and if you are just uh, if you want to leave the subject and want to do it like this like uh, like you will get only four marks so that way if you are thinking that way you can you can still get at least 60 or 70 percent marks by attending this course so best of luck so let's start our today's session on sequential circuit so today we will talk about latches flip flops and counters so so this is a one of the like if you take the whole digital logic chapter the digital logic subject it is the most easiest subject in the whole 12 subject okay that is uh, true okay but in the sequential circuit it, you may face some confusion okay you may face some problem but uh, along with like when so if you in between the explanation if you feel any any conceptual like any conceptual problem if you want me something to repeat again or if you want to clarify something again so you can comment it okay so with that let's start our to the session okay fine so what is sequential circuit before that we have read about combinational circuit where 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 we have some inputs we have some inputs and we have get some output okay this is a simple combinational circuit whereas in sequential circuit this outputs again are used as a another input to get the output so the output q in plus 1 will be let's say output is q and input is let's say something uh, variables let's say x y z okay there may be more than one input so the output you will be will be dependent on x y z as well as q n that is the previous input that is called sequential circuit okay so in the sequential circuit the basic circuit you can think about is the latches so uh, if i talk about some properties of latches so when we will draw latches we will execute that it will be more clear so for now you can just think like this is there is no synchronization done and it is level triggered now we will see how it is done what does it means okay and it cannot be used as a register so latches always checks the input continuously and changes the output latches is something which is not controlled by clock it always keeps checking the input it always keeps checking the inputs and if some uh, changes in input happens it changes the output okay so no clocks are present uh, so let us start with sl latch that is the most basic one so you can see the circuit the circuit you have to memorize okay so this is the main part or the cascading part okay so where we have cross coupled two two nor gates okay ah uh, yes so here we have s and we have r this is called sr latch 
and this is E, this is nothing but we call it as enable line, which which will turn off or turn on your latch, okay, which is used to turn off or turn on your latch. So uh, uh, let us uh, execute this and look at the truth table. So what are the input variable? E N is R, okay, and what is the output variable? Q and Q dash Q bar. Also we call Q bar. Let me use Q bar. Okay. Now uh, let me keep space for this. Let me start with when E equals to one. Okay, e enable equals to one. And when enable equals to one, okay, there can be four cases for SR 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So this is the most easier one. So let me start with this. When S is 0 and R is 1, okay. Now you can see this is a AND gate. This is a AND gate. So and this is uh, 1 and this is 0. So since S is 0, you are sure that result of end gate will be obviously zero. Result of end gate will be obviously zero. Now we don't know about this. We don't know about this. What will be this end gate result? So this is E, this is R. Okay. Now we have considered E is one. E is one. Okay. Then this will be one. This will be one. Fine. Now let us go inside this circuit. You can see in the circuit the output QT is again used as input that's why this is sequential circuit okay that's why this is called sequential circuit so uh, since you have zero here and you have one here and this is a OR gate and then you have applied a NOT gate so uh, since you have one you can be sure the output uh, the OR operation result of OR operation will be one and then after performing the NOT the result will be zero obviously okay so this zero this zero will be in the output as well as this zero will come from here and it will be also present here and now if we perform or operation okay or operation and then not operation so zero or zero is zero and then not operation will result one which will go all the way till here also as input now again this if you look at this one one you are performing not operation the result will be zero again this zero 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 or operation result will be one so somewhere result is always constant or result is not changing so our uh, output is obviously used as an input but our output is constant here output is constant that is q is always zero and q bar is always one okay fine so uh, consider now this case okay consider now this case where where we have s is equals to one so so let me let me erase these values okay so So when uh, now S is equals to one and R is equals to zero at that time, since R is zero, you can be sure that here you will have zero because this is an AND gate. And since E is one, one into one will be also one. Okay. Now the circuit, it, the circuit is actually kind of same. Okay. If you see, uh, so this is mirrored. Okay. So zero. You have one here, so one performing or you will have the output as the output as zero. One plus one plus anything will be one, and a performing not operation, you will have zero. The zero will be now present here also. Now zero nor zero is equals to is equals to one. This one will be transferred here, transferred here. So now the output is stabilized now we can say the output output is stabilized okay stabilized that means it will it is remaining same it is remaining same okay so 
the output is always remaining this that is q is 1 and q bar is 0 okay so now now execute for other cases okay which is little bit trickier okay So when E is equals to one and S R both are zero zero, both are zero zero. That means that means end operation will result zero. And operation will result zero. Now this is uh this is or operation first. But to get the result of or operation, we have to know this. We have to know this. What is this? Okay, let's say for now consider the output was 1 and here it was 0 then this one will be transferred here and this 0 will be transferred here okay now if you perform NOR operation so 0 0 0 0 will be NOR after NOR operation it will be 1 it will be again 1 and 1 and 0 after NOR operation it will remain zero because one plus one is one and after performing not it will be zero now again this one is transferred here and this zero is transferred here the output will remain same again you will get one zero okay so if we are giving input if if our, our previous output was one zero it is remaining always the same always the same okay so same way same way let let us consider let us consider instead of one zero output let us consider the previous output was zero one so will it change anything no because the circuit is mirrored circuit so zero will come here one will come here which will make zero one nor operation result as again zero again zero and zero zero nor operation result as one and it is again repeated so that means that means the output the output is dependent on the previous output what was the previous output that is get stored and that remains unchanged so when sr is 0 0 at that time the output remain unchanged unchanged so when you put sr is 0 1 or 1 0 then using this input you can change the output and after changing the output after changing the output when you give input 0 0 then the output will be unchanged output will be unchanged or we also can say this is working as storage which is storing the previous result okay now when enable equals to 0 enable is equals to 0 you can see the case is same whatever the srb don't care don't care so whatever the sr may be the output the output of this to end gate will be again zero and when in this cascade you have inputs at zero zero it is again will work as storage one okay storage one storage that means output will be unchanged output will remain unchanged okay now let's look at the last case that is when we have ones. so is also one r also one and enable is obviously one so the output of n gate is one okay now now again so since we have one okay we can perform the or operation so what will be the output the output will be so you have one so or operation it is happening so output will be one plus anything will be one and performing not will be zero okay then here also when you do it you are getting zero but again this zero is coming here this zero is coming here and the output remains zero zero output remains zero zero but this is what we don't want okay so our aim is to get some q and q complement so we call this as indefinite state indefinite state okay now there are some terminology related to that so here sr when the output is zero 
it is also called reset state and when q is equals to 1 this is called set state okay okay now what is characteristic equation it is the equation which represents the output now obviously what i just said that output you cannot just represent to using this input your output should be expressed with input as well as the previous output so let me write let me write the characteristic equation only for e is equals to 1 e n equals to 1 okay so when e equals to 1 okay at that time the output q n plus 1 that means n plus 1 at output will be obviously a function of s r and q n so that is s plus r bar q n so let, let let us verify this one okay so when s and r both are zero zero so you put zero here you put r bar that is means that means one here so which will so let me write it if s is equals to one and r is equals to one then that implies q n plus one is equals to q n nine okay when if s is equals to 0 r is equals to 1 at that time at that time it says so since r is 1 so it will get complemented so it will be 0 into qn so 0 and your output will remain 0 if s is equals to 1 and r equals to 0 at that time qn plus 1 is equals to 1 fine because s is 1 so whatever is added the output will remain 1 fine any doubt in this in this SL latch so what is the problem in latch that that we are just talking about there is no process of synchronization whenever you will change the input whenever if the input change then output will obviously change change so we don't have control over that okay so uh, so that means if you want to keep it as a storage what you have to do you have to constantly give the input c as zero zero so that's that is what solve in flip-flop so we will come to flip-flop later after this latches okay so any doubt till now any doubt till now okay characteristic equation so like can you explain this like uh, okay how if the question is how this characteristic equation came is this your question okay okay so so in that case uh, okay so we have read about we have read about k map so we, i am saying the process of how we can find it okay that is qn so you have how many input variable three input variable that is three variable the or which the output will depend that is qn s and r and you will have the output qn plus one okay so i am saying because you are curious about that so that's why i'm explaining this but this will be not required but yeah this will clear your concept so try out eight possible combination that is 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 and there will be many more okay now now look at this when sr is 0 0 that time what happens the previous the previous output remains same what is the previous output it was zero so it will remain same it will remain same when sr is zero one then qn plus one is zero then qn plus one is zero so when sr is one zero then again qn plus one is one when sr is one one then this is a don't care state this is a don't care state because we don't care about this state because we don't take it into count then we have 0 0 that means storage that means previous input what was previous input that was 1 
this will be remain unchanged this will remain unchanged okay so when you have next zero one the output will be zero so that's how you can make the whole table now when you have the whole table you have ones you have don't cares okay you what you can do and you have three input variable you can go for k map k map for the for finding the function for u n plus one that is what we have done so if you find this function for q n plus one this will be dependent on these three input now i am assuming that this is what you can do it okay so you can write mean terms that is q n bar is r bar so depending on that you can do manual uh, minimization or using k map after minimization you will get this characteristic equation so clear So finding the characteristic characteristic equation is may not be helpful in the get like, but you should know the concept that is okay. So you should know how it is it could be fine, and this expression you have to you have to memorize. Okay, this expression you should memorize. Now coming to D latch, which is very easy. So you have S L latch. So you have S and R. Just um, just make another input D, which is passed to the S, and not of D is passed to the R. Okay, that's how we make D latch. That's how we make D latch. Okay. So if we if we look at two table, so again we will have Annabel and D, and we will have the output Q and Q bar. Okay. Okay. So when Annabel is zero. That means it is zero, and when SR flip flop has enable equals to zero, it will work as the same. Whatever the SR value is, don't care. Okay, it will not care about this. So it will work as a storage. Okay, it will work as a storage or the previous input. Okay, so so let let me write it in that way only. Okay, so this is the uh, output at. K uh, Q N plus one and N plus one it will be Q N okay Q N when enable is equals to one and D is zero now when D is zero that means A C is zero and D is zero means R is one okay R is one so when you have input zero one in the A C latch the output will be zero okay and when you have D as one at that time s will be 1 but r will become 0 which will make the output 1 so this is this is used like why we did this we did this to remove that in that indefinite state or that is the unused state okay to remove the unused state and this also can be used this is what used actually in register this is used in register actually not latch so we are talking about currently latch uh, in the register we use d flip flop which is also most are like same only we have clock extra so otherwise everything is same okay uh, so this is used in register okay d latch so if we uh, so now you have to memorize only a characteristic equation for sl latch and everything else you can find it out okay by derivation like you we know We know Q n plus one is equals to S plus R bar plus R bar Q n, and here in D latch in D latch, what we have is that S equals to D, okay, and R equals to D bar. R equals to D bar. Then the expression will characteristic equation will become D plus So R will be D bar, R equals to D bar, and you have R bar. That is again another bar. Okay, and Q n and Q n, which will make D plus D Q n, which will be D. Okay, when when E is equals to one. Okay, because we are not considering that E equals to zero case. Uh, our So to make this equation more simplified, okay. 
so this is about d latch this is about all about d latch so any doubt in d latch any doubt in this okay so let's go to jk okay let's go to jk latch so this is also the circuit is very easy you already know circuit for sl latch so we are using this as a black box okay we are using this as a black box and we have a and gate and gate okay so this is a is this is r and the two inputs that is j and k you have the output of sl latch that is q n and q n bar okay and what will be extra here in the jk latch is that the output again will be connected to the input here so k with q n and q n bar will be connected to j okay fine now uh, so also there will be a enable line so we have enable j k and q n q n bar okay so when enable is equals to zero this is again performing as a sl latch so we it will be don't care and the output will be like storage okay so let me write it as qn plus one qn plus one this is also in plus one and the output will be qn okay now there will be enable is one and you have zero zero look at this what happens you have jk as zero zero so the output of n gate will be again zero zero when in the sl latch you have input at zero zero your output will be again storage so this is same as sl latch what is the difference there is no difference here so when let, let us try with zero one okay zero one so when j is zero so let me clear let me remove these values here okay so when you have j is zero and k is one so since j is zero the output of n gate will be zero output of n gate will be zero but what will be the output here so let me for now write it like here you have q n plus one okay this is nothing but q n plus one so let me write it as q n okay that is that is what transfer okay so the next output i will signify that as q n plus one okay so you have q n here you have q n here so multiplying one with q n will result q n will result q n so in the sl latch look at this this is a sl latch s is zero okay now what can be the q n it can be zero or one now when q n is one q n that means the previous output was one at that time you are giving sl latch input zero one which will make q n zero which will make q n zero uh, so i am again i am repeating let's consider for the first time q n equals to one so what will happen you will give zero one input to the sl latch which will make the output to zero okay now let's say previously q n was zero other case let's say previously q n was zero so when you will pass one zero to the end gate the output will be zero and in the sl latch when you will pass zero zero as input it will keep the output that means what was the output zero so when s is zero okay in the jk latch when jk is zero one it if the out previous output was one it is converted into zero if the previous output was zero it remains zero that means nothing but the output will be q n will be zero okay q n will be zero fine now now come to next one that is one one zero 
so you can you can i think guess this this will this will be also same this will be also same so okay so you have now j as 1 and k as 0 so you will have 0 here in the along with j you will have q n bar that is q n bar okay q n bar let's say your previous output was 0 then what will be q n bar q n bar will be 1 it will be 1 in the s so 1 0 that means the output will be 1 now if the previous output was 1 that means here you will have 0 you will have 0 so 0 0 means storage so you will remain you will retain the one you will retain the one that means if the previous output was zero that is converted into one if the previous output was one that retains in this stage so at last we can say the output will be one whatever the previous output it will be not dependent on that okay so any doubt till now any doubt okay okay so now now one 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 okay so the in this stage so this is where uh, jk large differs from sr okay this is where because till now the output we have written this is same in sr also now this is where it is it differs so the intermediate state we use it here how we use it let me show you let me show you that Okay, let, let us consider okay. just a minute. Just a minute. Um, so let us consider the previous output was 0 and 1. Okay, 0 and 1. Fine. So JK value is now 1, 1. JK value is 1, 1. Okay, then qn plus 1 here you will have 1 and this 0 will this 0 will come here and you will have 0 here okay that is qn nothing but qn this is nothing but qn bar okay fine the previous output was 0 1 that is reflected in the input okay now now what is the output of n gate 1 here it is 0 so when SR latch has input 1 0 what will be the output it will be 1 0 it will be 1 0 is it here so 0 will be changed to 1 1 will be changed to 0 so output changes okay fine now the new qn is 1 so here also the input will change here also the input will change because the previous output is changed now again let's perform this 0 1 and operation is now this is also changed to 0 1 into 1 and get output is 1 which is also again changed now what will be the output of sr now 0 1 0 1 is input for sr so output will be again 0 1 output will be again 0 1 so previously it was 0 1 then it becomes 1 0 now it is becoming again 0 1 now you can again execute you know what will happen you know what will happen now it will again become one zero so that means it will again become one it will again become zero which will make this again one and make this again zero so that means this is uh, changing the output continuously changing the output continuously so this is called racing this is called racing okay what is racing that is changing output continuously continuously okay so this is the whole truth table for jk latch okay now what will be the characteristic equation that so for sr also let, let us write for sr okay 
So for SR, it was QN plus 1 equals to S plus R bar QN. Now let us put the, what is the value of S and R in this JK flip-flop. So uh, look at here, we can see S, what is S? S is nothing but J into QN bar. So we can write S is equals to J into QN bar. Okay. And what is R? What is R? R is nothing but K into QN. K into QN. Okay. That is K into QN. Okay. Now put these values here. Okay. So J QN bar. Okay. Plus R is nothing but K QN whole bar into QN which will make J QN bar plus K bar plus QN bar. Okay. Into QN. Okay. So you have J QN bar plus K bar QN plus QN QN bar which is 0 which can be cancelled and this is the characteristic equation let me write it clearly here that is J QN bar plus K bar QN okay now these characteristic equations are very important very important because sometimes what happens that uh, they, they, they will draw a JK flip-flop okay in the question it is very common question that they will draw a JK flip-flop okay and they will make some circuit with a b maybe they are uh, sending this to and 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 this is passed to j and k both so what you have to do you have to just replace at that time j with a and b k with a and b and you have to find another characteristic equation so that's how we will do these things okay now these type of questions are very common obviously i have showed that simple one for example just so generally there may be a sub some complicated circuit and uh, and also the circuit also may be dependent on qn so it's just same you will just replace the j and k value with this and to do that you have to memorize this characteristic equations or you can just memorize this and swap the values so okay so any doubt in this jk latch any doubt in this jk latch So let us go to T latch, which is nothing but you have your JK latch, JK latch, okay. And the output T will be sent to both, sent to both, okay. So this will be sent to both. Then you will have some QN and QN bars. Fine. Now let us draw. Let us draw the truth table for this. Okay. So, and you will also have an enable line, obviously. So we are skipping that enable for now. Okay. We are skipping that enable. So when enable will be zero, it will act as a storage. So we already know this one. Okay. So T and QN QN bar. So when T is 0, when T is 0, at the time J, K and K, these two will both have, this will have what? 0. No, fine. Z, uh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. So this will have Q in my QN plus 1. Let's say this is QN plus 1, QN plus 1. This will be QN. So this is nothing but storage. Okay, storage. When T is equal to 0 when t is equals to 1 when t is equals to 1 let me see what happens it is 1 it is 1 so the output will be complemented yeah? output will be complemented so q n plus 1 q n plus 1 
clear this message okay so this was q and and when this is one the output will be previous output will be complemented which will make q n bar q n bar okay so this t latch also very important like d like d latch we have said that d latch is used for register the same way t latch is used for making counters specifically if i say synchronize counter synchronize counters okay and d latch is used for register jk latch is also used for making card that in the um, sorry uh, asynchronous counter okay but t latch also can be used as asynchronous counter uh, there is nothing about that so specially t latch is used for synchronized counter now let us go to the characteristic equation okay so we already know the characteristic equation for jk which is qn plus 1 is equals to j qn bar plus k bar qn okay so look at this that we have just find it out this equation just now okay so what we can do here j here j and k both will be replaced with t okay both will be replaced with t so this will be t q n bar plus t bar t bar q n which is not thing but t zor q a t zor q a okay fine so i think characteristic equation is clear for t latch okay so if latch is clear then uh, then let's go to flip flops in the flip flops what happens is that we maintain a clock instead of uh, instead of enable we maintain a clock so, and we use this as a h trigger okay what is h trigger means what happens is that let's talk about first enable and latches okay so when enable is going high and let's say coming zero and going high and coming zero going high, coming zero okay so when enable will be in this stage when this stage our output will change continuously so in this time let's say let's say sr let's say we are talking about sr sr remain zero then go to one okay then again go to zero then again go to one then again go to zero if if we do so what will happen to the output let's say r is also remaining the same way like zero then again go to one go to zero and here like this okay then what will be effect in the output output will also keep changing uh, so here s is one r is zero so output will be one output will be one that is nothing but qn down then again here it is zero here it is one r is one so it will make the output zero okay then again it will go up go down okay like this okay and it will get stored now look at this in when you have enabled a line for storing something the out the output changes continuously and that is what we don't want this is called h triggered h triggered that means when you have a edge in the enable line you are changing continue you are continuously changing the output this is not done in flip flops okay so in flip flop what happens is that we change the output only when only when the uh, the enable line or the clock we say here that is the clock let's say let me draw the clock okay when the clock changes 0 to 1 only in this time instance we change the output okay we change the output only in this time instance when 1 to becoming 0 so obviously not both this is 
called this is called negative edge trigger negative edge triggered and this is called positive edge triggered okay so if the flip flop is positive edge triggered then output will change only when the clock changes 1 to 0 when the clock changes 1 to 0 for positive edge trigger and for negative edge trigger flip flop output will change only when the clock is changing its uh, changing its value 0 to 1 that is called edge trigger so flip flop is edge trigger and we do synchronization using using clock okay it can be also used as a register so okay d flip flop is one of the example of register so so again we will not draw truth table okay because this will be same this is going to be the same truth table okay this is same as sr latch what will change just jk flip flop so we will go into that okay the characteristic equation is also same as latch okay but what is you have here different that is clock okay which will help you to change the output change the output in a controlled manner okay in a controlled manner it is not that when enable when clock is one you are continuously changing the output when clock will clock will change its value only then the output will change so the same way d flip flop also having the same same values okay same characteristic equation also so okay now go to jk okay. okay i think there is some slight miss so okay 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 i think it will uh, it uh, have it later okay so let us solve solve these questions okay so sl latch is made by cross coupling two nand gates so the the SL latch we have just seen it was made by cross coupling to NOR gates okay cross coupling to NOR gates so here you have to make the SL latch by cross coupling to NAND gate okay this is how you will make so it will not change it anything okay it will not change anything it just it may require to change the output sequence okay nothing else every other thing is same okay every other thing is same and the output table output table may change okay look at this so give given that s and r is zero so let us consider s and r is zero okay then the what will be the result okay so we can see here so r we can see since this is zero we are sure what will be the output the output will be one since r is zero since r is zero we know the output will be one because this is end gate the end operation is performed so result will be zero and after performing not we will have one so you will have one here then again uh, again it will remain one one so which stage is this which stage is this in SL latch we have talked this is a intermediate state or like this is unused state we also say unused state okay so D is the correct answer so you can see now for SL value 0 0 we are getting intermediate state so when we made this by NAND gates everything is same just 0 0 SL value is generally swapped with 1 1 SL value this is replaced when we this is the difference when we use NAND or NOR okay fine <clears throat> so look at this question what it is saying consider the following following circuit involving three D type flip flops which is used in a certain type of counter configuration in in all type of flip flops where reset to zero at power on okay what will be total number of distinct outputs represented by the p 
PQ one generated by the counter. So this is a counter question, but still we can solve it. Okay, this we can solve it because we have the idea about flip flops. Okay, that is D flip flop. You can see which flip flop is used here. D flip flop. So uh, okay. So let me here draw that table. So let me name this flip flop as A, this as B, this as C, and all three will have input. D A, D B, and D C, and the output of D A is P, and then Q, and then R. Okay. So initially, we have said the outputs are at zero. Okay. Outputs to zero. So now, what will be D A, D B, and D C? Look at this D A. What is D A? DA is coming from follow the circuit, follow the circuit here from R. So DA is nothing but R. What is DB? Look at B. Follow the circuit. What is this? A NOR gate. A NOR gate, and it is coming from P and R. So DB is nothing but P plus R whole bar. Okay, NOR circuit, and What is DC? From where DC is coming? DC is nothing but multiplication of that is end of end of follow the circuit here. That is Q into Q into R bar. Q into R bar. So output of this was R. So that means Q bar will be R bar. So R bar into Q. So that is the circuit. Okay. That is the expression. That is the expression for D A D B then D C. So initially we have set the output as all zero. Now let us define what will be the next input. What will be the next input? Input will be decided by the previous output. So let us find it. T D A will be R, which is zero, which is zero. Okay, and D B will be P plus R whole bar, which will make you, which will give result as one, and D C will be Q into R bar, so Q is zero. So you can do any end operation; the result will remain zero. Now, what will be the output? Since this is D, this is since this is D lat or D flip flop, whatever the output like flip table is same. So D A if if D A is the have input as zero, then output P will be zero. If D B has input one, the output will be one and D C also zero. So this is a two table of detail that we have just seen. So the output just get copied, okay, from input. Then what will be the next input? What will be the next input? D A will be equal to R, okay, that is still zero. And what will be D B? That is P plus R whole bar, which is again remains one. And D C is equal to Q R bar, okay, that is Q into R bar. Now Q is also one. And R bar or zero one, so DC will change to one. So what will be the output? Zero one one again because of D latch. Okay, this is a transparent latch. Now then, what will be the next input? Is that DA is equals to R, which is one. What will be DB? That is P plus R, which is one, and complement is zero, and Q into R bar, which will Result you zero. Q that is one and R bar is zero. R is one, so R bar is zero. Okay, so the output will be one zero zero. Now let's again copy. Let's again copy the output and after that again decide what will be the next input. D A will be R. R is zero. What will be D B? That is P plus R. P plus R. Our complement then it's complement. Okay, then. It will be zero, and what will be DC? DC will be nothing but Q into R bar, Q into R bar, which is zero because Q is zero. So what will be the output? Zero, zero, zero. Okay. Now look at this. We are in a cycle. So we started with zero, 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 and we came back to zero, zero, zero. Now what is the question is asking? Is that what is the total number of? Distinct outputs represented by P 
key keyword generated by counter. What is the number of distinct output? You have 000, 010, 011, and 100. So you have four type of distinct outputs. So the answer is four. Okay. Clear? Any doubt in this? Any doubt? So the next question, it is related to the previous question. So if at some instance prior to the occurrence of clock H P Q R have value 0, 1, 0, if somewhere P Q R have value 0, 1, 0, then what shall be the value of P Q R after the clock age? That means after the next clock cycle, what will be the value? That means 0, 1, 0 was before and what will be the value next time? It will be 0, 1, 1. That is what you have to tell. So, the next output will be 0, 1, 1. Okay. Fine. Okay. Consider the implementation of two bit counters. Okay. Okay. Now, still, this can be solved. Okay. Since we have now no about T flip flop. Okay. Otherwise. Okay. Okay. Let, let's come back to this question after after solving. After solving. Uh, after reading about counters. Okay. Uh, so, look at this question. What it is saying. Consider the circuit given below with initial state q0 is 1 and q1 is 0 q2 is 0 okay the state of the circuit given by the value 4 into q2 2 into q1 plus q0 this is nothing but the decimal value which is saying your msb msb is q2 and lsb is q0 lsb is q0 that is what it says okay now uh, look at the, what will be the correct sequence okay now okay. so let me do it here uh, so we have input as d0 d1 and d2 and we have output as q0, q1, and q2. Okay. And what is the default output? That is the 100. Zero, zero. Okay. 100. Zero, zero. 100. Zero, zero. So and also we will write what is the corresponding decimal value what is the corresponding decimal value considering this is as msb this is as msb okay don't confuse so in the question which is given that q2 is msb okay so i have written in the reverse order so this is msb so the decimal value is one okay decimal value is one so d0 what is d0 so for that let us write let us write the expression so d0 is nothing but zor of q1 q2 zor of q1 and q2 what is d1 it is equals to q0 d2 is equals to q1 okay so Now you can you can see here what is the d0? D0 is q1 zor q2. 0 zor zor. It will be 0. It will be 0. Now d1 is d1 is q0. So that is 1. And d2 is d2 is q1, which is 0. Okay. Now uh, what will be the output? Output will be output will be just copied. Okay. 0 1 0. Okay. This will be copied. 
now again what is the decimal value of this this is nothing but 2 then you have 0 1 0 as the next input no sorry sorry not 0 1 0 that is what we have to find it out so now d0 is q1 or q2 q1 is 1 q2 is 0 so 1 or 0 is 1 which is d0 then we have d1 which is q0 that means 0 d2 which is q1 it will result 1 okay then what will be the output 101 1. what will be the decimal value decimal value is 5 okay 5 now again let's let's write down okay so that is what we find out from the given circuit here this circuit was given in the question so look at d0 that is the input where from where this is coming this is coming from q1 okay and q2 and q2 and send in the zor operation zor gate and this is inserted into d0 so that's why d0 is q1 zor q2 okay now what will be d0 again the next value of d0 will be we performing zor it will be 1 then it will be q0 and q1 this is output 110 and what will be the decimal 3 okay because we are msb is the this this one the msb okay okay so, so yes so don't need time so keep asking your doubts in any doubts you have keep asking that okay so what will be the next input uh d0 is equals to q1 zor q0 which is again one d1 will be q0 that is 1 d2 will be q1 which is which remains 1 which remains 1 so the output will be 1 1 1 so decimal value will be 7 so again we can continue this process but we think we don't need we don't have to because we have options so i think we can discuss some of the options so let us see currently the sequence we have get we have get that is 1 2 5 3 7 one two five three seven one two so this cancels one two five three seven okay this looking right okay one two seven so okay this also get cancelled one six this also get cancelled okay so after three stage you can like find it out which is the correct answer so you can continue this you will get this steps or stages also okay so these questions are relatively easier so it's it just the question will look tough okay they are there and maybe a complicated circuit it will be like your six sense uh, it will be your iq that you have to transform the complicated circuit in the simple term okay and you have to solve that in a simple way um so D flip flop that is used to store one bit information that we have know we have we now know that we have we have read about D flip flop that is used to store one bit information that can be used in register for storing n bit to storing n bit we need to do cascading of n D flip flops we have to do cascading of n D flip flops because one flip D flip flop can store one bit so if we want to let's say do uh, uh, build a 8 bit register we have to cascade 8 d flip flops the group of 8 flip flops is known as a register the register has capacity to shift the information if the register has the capacity to shift the information then it is called shift register what is shifting what is shifting of value like let me draw it so let's say you have three uh, four d flip flop four d flip flop that means a four bit register let's say the value present in zero one one zero if it can shift the value here that is d zero will go here this one will go here this one will go here so this will become one this will become one this will become zero that is nothing but the shifting of the output 
they, these registers are called shift register. So this is very easy to implement. Just connect the output of D0 to the input of D1. Okay, just connect the output of D0 to the input of D1. Output of D1 will be connected to the input of D2. Output of D2 will be connected to the input of D3. That's how you can build a shift register. That is not a big deal. Okay, now these registers can be four types, four types, CISO, PISO, CIPO, and PIPO, which is full form is serial in, serial out, parallel in, parallel, uh, serial out, uh, serial in, parallel out, and parallel in, parallel out, okay? So, let us draw, okay? So, first will be, let, let us draw CISO, serial in, serial out. So, let us consider a 4-bit 4-bit register so we are drawing it like a black box we are not drawing the circuits so you can you can visualize the circuit here so we have 4-bit deep flip flop so you send the input serial input from here and you get the output from here so you can get the output only from here now consider the register contains 1011 okay so at the, for the first time when you let's say giving the input serial input as zero okay if you get give the serial input as zero what will be the content of the register now it will be zero and so zero is serial input that will be stored in the first flip-flop and all other storage bit will be transferred one flip-flop ahead that is a shift register will be shifted zero one zero one and the one that could not be placed here that will come as output that will come as your output so to do this work that is one serial in and that is one shifting one shifting need one clock cycle one clock cycle okay so again let's in the next in the next one if you give one is a input then it will be one zero one zero because this is shifted 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 okay and one is the next input and one will go as a output fine in the next step you will get the output zero okay <coughs> so that is how c so uh, operates okay now we have serial in parallel out cpo so so the same way you have serial input but in the case of output you don't have to always read from left right side you can directly read from here you can directly read from here the value you can directly read from here okay this is also used to convert some parallel data into serial data or some serial data to parallel data okay consider a data you are having that is serial okay serially present it is coming through somewhere serially now you want to convert you want to send those data parallelly to some uh, multiple circuits so so at that time you can use this CPO and or PISO register. This parallel register will be parallel input. When you are getting parallel input, if you want to convert them into a serial input, then PISO also can be used. Okay, PISO can be used at that time, which is you can like no, you have guessed already that is parallel input, parallel input, but output will be serial. Output will be serial output okay and the same way if you have people that will be parallel input and parallel output parallel input and parallel output now since you are you are giving input okay at that time also you can get the output what is inside the register so this will only need one cycle only need one cycle but here 
to get the whole data in the register you have to do four clock cycle in the first clock cycle you are getting one that is this one in the second clock cycle you are getting this one this one okay in the third clock cycle you will get zero which is this in the fourth clock cycle you will get this one so you needed four cycle here in the CISO but in the people you need only one clock cycle okay so we say people is faster faster and this is slower but uh, it is not about speed both has different things to do both have different types of application okay so okay it is based on the applications okay speed speed is okay now look at this question what it is saying that a four bit serial in parallel out shift register okay is used with a feedback as shown in the figure okay so feedback means the output is it is again connected to input that is into feedback okay uh, the shifting sequence is qa to qb to qc to qd okay this is the shifting sequence if the output is all zeros initially so let's say zero 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 that is all zero initially then it finally repeats it after how many times so when this um this output will again come so let me write you have serial input you have qa qb qc qd okay so initially all are zero okay now this is a shift register shift this is a shift register uh, remember that this is a shift register okay now look at this here the input is serial but you can fetch the output in the parallel way because you are fetching qb okay which cannot be actually in the parallel in the serial output case now what will be the serial input serial input is nothing but follow the circuit that is nothing but a zor not zor that is x not of qb and qd that is qb x not of qd qd okay so here in the circuit let's come to this what we have to find after how many cycle again we will get zero 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 so let us start uh, first is qb x nor qd qb x that is zero x nor qd this will be one this will be one okay x not table so and since you have serial input one it will be it will be pushed into the first that is qa okay this bit qa bit okay and all, all the this will be shifted this will be shifted it will be shifted okay and what will be the next serial input that is again qb into qd that qb in x nor qd which is again one okay this will be again pushed to here pushed to ab a qa and this will be pushed to here shifted to here here you have another shifting here you have another okay what will be the next serial input that is a one x uh, x nor zero which is zero so this will result zero okay and one will be shifted here one will be here this zero will be shifted here so again one and zero perform x naught which will result zero okay so it will be zero zero one one okay now again one x naught uh, zero which will be zero so again zero 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 one again one and zero okay this is zero which will be zero 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 fine so this was a basic question like uh, this question you will face very frequently in the exam so how many clock cycle are required to count clock cycle now here you had zero 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 here you are getting again one so don't count uh, these values okay 
count like this when you apply one clock cycle the output changes like this so you here you have applied one clock cycle the output changes second clock cycle third clock cycle you have applied the output changes fourth clock cycle fifth clock cycle sixth clock cycle so yeah after applying six clock cycle you have changed the output so output zero 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 initially then it finally repeats after one two three four five six times okay if it is number of clock cycle then it is there also you have to count it like this okay now coming to counters okay counters what is counters counters is a device which stores the number of times a particular event a process has occurred often a relationship to a clock signal okay so let us let us understand this so uh, so it can operate in three mode okay three mode that is up counter down counter or up down counter okay and we have two type of counter asynchronous and synchronous okay so let us go one by one counter then we will be more clear about this what is counter so coming to asynchronous counter which is which which what it does is it counts the value like if it is a three bit counter a three bit counter then it will start counting from zero go to one go to two go to three go to four go to five go to six and seven okay and will it go to eight no because this will require four bit so using three bit this is the counter till seven and then again it will come to zero this is nothing but called up counter this is also called up counter that means you are counting upwards is starting from zero to seven if you are counting seven to six to five to four to three to two and to one and then to zero you can come go back to seven then that will be called as down counter okay so now uh, we have read we have uh, we, now we are clear okay let me let me also write this one seven six five four three two one zero and then again go back to seven this is nothing but down counter okay now we know what is up counter and down counter now what is synchronous and asynchronous counter so first let us talk about asynchronous counter asynchronous counter means so when this word comes synchronous asynchronous that means you 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 are sure that there is something about clock okay and here is also the same here you only have a clock let's say this is a jk flip flop okay jk flip flop you have only clock attached clock attached with this you have only clock attached with the first jk flip flop then if you are using more than one jk flip flop for counter the output of previous jk flip flop will be used as a clock for the next jk flip flops for the next jk flip flops okay you wait H A K Q A clock. So this circuit, this circuits are known as asynchronous counter. Why asynchronous counter? The clock of the next these flip flops they don't have these their own clock. Okay, the the output of previous flip flop is used as a clock of the second one. Okay, so. Uh, so let us draw a ripple counter which is a asynchronous counter okay so to for ripple counter we use jk flip flop okay so and if we are using n flip flop n flip flop okay that means we can we can accommodate n bit okay which will which will help us to count 0 to 2 to the power n minus n minus 1 okay okay 
so let me uh, draw this using two flip flops two flip flops okay so what will happen in the two flip flops we can count up to three zero one two three so let me see let us see how we are counting so we have j k okay j k and the output let's say j a let me give this name as b and b also this one yeah, sorry Uh, J A K A Q A. Okay, now that will be connected to the clock, and, and you have Q B. Okay, and all these J and K, it will be one. It will be one. And we let's say have a clock here, clock here. This is the actual clock which is connected to the first flip flop. Okay. Now let us check what will be the value of Q A and Q B. Okay, what will be the value of Q A and Q B? Okay, in each clock cycles, in each clock cycles. Now, what will be the clock cycles? Let's say it starts with zero, goes to one, like this, like this. This is nothing but the clock. Okay, this is nothing but the clock. So we have all JK input as one. That means which state it will be? It will be in toggling state. Toggling state. Okay, toggle state. That means what is the output that will be complemented? If you can remember the JK truth table we have just run, so output will be complemented. What is the previous output that will be complemented? But what is the difference? This is a flip flop. Flip flop means it is edge triggered. Edge triggered means the output will change only when clock changes its output. Let's consider JK edge triggered, edge triggered, and positive edge triggered. Okay, uh, let me say, and it, I mentioned it that is a positive edge triggered. Okay, so these flip flops are positive edge triggered flip flop. That means when this changes then our output will change and this time output will change this time output will change at this time output will change here output will change okay only here not all the time okay that's why we we are using flip flops not the latches okay now what will be qa what will be qa first let us look at qa so QA is initially zero, initially zero. So it will remain zero until it uh, faces this one. Okay, when it will come to this, since the JK input is one one, what will be the output? Output will be complemented. Output will be complemented here. Okay, because clock here the positive edge we are getting. Okay, because of the positive edge, the output changes. So in which output will change? Output will change. Okay. Now in what stage it will go? It will be decided by the input of JK. Okay. It will be decided by the input of JK. Now since JK is 1, 1. So output will be just complemented. What was before? That will be complemented. So before it was 0. Now I have made this one. Now it will get continued until it gets another positive edge. Look at this. Another positive edge. Okay. So again, it will goes down. It will go down. Okay, that means again the output is complemented and again going, going, going. Again, it changes the output in this positive edge, going all the way, changes its output and going all the way, and again changes the output going all the way. So this is clear. Now this is the signal for QA. That is this one, QA. Okay. Now, 
let me draw it for QB. Okay. Now QB clock. Look at this. QB will not change based on this clock. QB will change based on this clock. Okay. Because in the clock section of QB, uh, that is a uh, B JK flip flop. QA is connected. So B flip flop will think that QA is the counter. QA is the clock. So, so this will be positive edge. This will be positive edge here. Okay. So initially it will go to zero. It will change to one and it will continue with one until another positive edge. And again, complement the output again. It will keep going. Okay. Now, now at each positive clock, that is when clock was one, let us analyze. Let us analyze what is the outputs. Okay, so let's say QA, QB, QA, QB, QA is the output. Okay, QB, QA is the output. So initially, in this stage, till this much. Okay, let me change the color for better visibility. So. Okay, so at this time, at this time, what is the QA QB in this clock cycle? Okay, okay, let me not draw the whole cycle. Okay, just look at one line. So, so this is QA and QB are both zero zero. Okay, go to next uh, next positive edge. Okay, next uh, here, the next clock cycle. Okay, in the next clock cycle, QA and QB. QA become one now. QA become one. Okay, this was zero zero. QA become one, but QB is zero. QB is still zero. So this is zero. QA become one. Now look at this cycle. QA is zero, but QB is one. QB is become one, but QA remains zero. Okay. In this cycle, in this cycle. QA become one and QB also became one. So again one one. In this cycle, again both became zero 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 zero. Now look at this. This is nothing but a counter. It is counting zero one two three again goes to zero. So is this clear? And this is a up counter. To be specific, this is a up counter. Okay. <coughs> Any doubt in this? Okay. So Let me let me uh, talk about some properties. Okay, some properties. So some we have already talked. That is, if it is a in flip flops, then you can count. You can count from zero to two to the power n minus one. Okay. We also call if you have in flip flop, then you can have two to the power n states. Okay. Okay. Now. Consider about the frequency and time. Okay, what is the what is the time? Time interval for clock. This is the time cycle time. This is the cycle. Sorry, cycle time. Okay, let me say T C. Okay. Now, what is the cycle time here in the QA? The QA. Okay, sorry. Let me erase this one. Let me start from positive edge. Okay. Okay, from these two. This. Let me consider as this cycle time as T A, and the another one, 
starts from here it will go to here let me say is tc now you can say yeah sorry tb you can see ta is equals to the double of tc okay look at this one two three three and four so and here you have only two so this is doubled two so we can say we can say ta is double of tc and also tb is double of ta okay what is tb actually that is a cycle time in the last output okay the last output okay if my, that is if we use the last output as the clock what will be the cycle time if we convert it into a frequency so 1 by ta okay let, let me just do 1 by so 1 by 2 into 1 by tc so we can do this which will which will make which will make this from this equation to i am writing if a that is frequency of a is equals to half of frequency of c that means frequency of c is equals to 2 into frequency of a or we don't need this okay only this is enough so we can what we can conclude is that the frequency of a that means after the frequency after uh, first flip flop get halved get half than the actual clock the same way from here also you can write if b is equals to if a by 2 which can be again replaced by if c by 4 which can be expressed as if c by 2 squared so we can see we can say that this counter also a frequency divider which will which will if you are using in flip-flops okay in flip-flops the output frequency will be nothing but the actual frequency if divided by 2 to the power n so here we had used two flip-flops so it is two square okay okay fine So, okay, let's come to some down counter. So, down counter is very easy. It is same. The way, the way we just did uh, up counter, JK, that is A, K, A, and also here, uh, J, B, and K, B, okay. Instead of taking this as out so this will be obviously connected to here okay you don't take this as input this as output sorry this as output don't take this as output because it will give you zero zero okay so consider when qa or qb and at that time what is sorry q a and so right let me write qb first then qa and qb bar and qa bar okay when qb and qa is 0 0 so this is this was the counter before 1 0 1 1 this was the counter before okay what will be after complementing 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 0 this is nothing but the down counter 3 2 1 0 so take this as out lsb and take this as msb that is qb bar qa bar okay don't take this one okay this will be taken for up counter and this will be taken for down counter okay so and what is up down counter up down counter this is we have read about up counter we have read about down counter so we will do up counter we will use up it will be up counter when we will use q in as my output 
and it will be down counter when we will use qn bar as my <coughs> output so send them in a two cross one marks send them in a two cross one marks marks will help you to select let's say there is a select line m so when if m is equals to zero let's say this is the actual output output so when m is equals to zero then qn will be output then qn then output will be qn that will imply you are using now up counter up counter and if m is equals to one then output will be output will be q n plus one which means you are using this as down counter as down counter okay this is up down counter so i think asynchronous counter is clear any doubt in this any doubt anyone <coughs> Fine. So I think everyone is clear. So let's go to synchronous counter. Okay. So in the synchronous counter, what we do? This is the opposite. This is just the opposite one. Opposite one means in the <coughs> asynchronous counter, we were using this output as clock. But no, here we will have separate clocks for each flip flops. Separate clocks for each flip flops. Okay, okay, separate clocks for each flip flops. But obviously, the out the inputs will not be one here. If input is also one, then obviously it will not be a counter. And instead of JK, instead of JK. We will use T flip flop. This will make our number of inputs lesser. And and so let me use T T. So number of input will be less here. So it will help to manage it better. So so, <coughs> so remember the table of T. So remember the table of T, okay? T and Q n plus one. If T is zero, it will return Q n. If T is one, it will do complement of Q n. Okay, it will do complement of Q n. Okay. Now let's say we want to make a counter which will count zero zero to zero one. Okay, to one one zero to one one. Okay. To one one, and then again go, it will go to zero zero. So how many flip flops we need? It's again two. Okay, since we are counting using two bits, so those properties are same. Okay. So let me first write the table here. Okay. Okay, you have to. Draw this one also. Let's say T A and T B are two flip flops. Okay, the counter, same counter, is connected to both. Same counter is connected to both. Uh, sorry, not clock. Same clock is connected to both. There is the output of Q A, Q A. And this is the output Q B. Fine. Okay. <clears throat> now we don't know what is the input. That is what we have to find it out. That is what we have to find out. We know we will count this way: zero, zero, two, zero, one, two, one, zero, two, one, one. Okay. Now to find out what will be the T A and T B, what I will do first, I will write down 
what i want what are we, what are my expectation of output okay that is what we will write so qb okay this is uh, the uh, so we are considering this as my lsb and msb okay so qa fine so qb and qa and let me write qb plus qa plus that signifies the next output now what will be tb and ta so let let us consider the current output are 0 comma 0 okay current output are 0 comma 0 comma 0 then what will be the next output it will be 0 1 it will be 0 1 now look at this only at qb so look at it only at qb qb before was 0 and now also qb is 0 so the previous output also 0 and the next output is also 0 then what should be the tb value what should be the tb value so consider the t flip flop and the output n plus 1 so if it is 0 it holds the previous value if it is 1 then it gets complemented now you are not complementing consider this to this you are retaining the same value that means tb will be 0 you are complementing qa that means before qa was 0 now you are making it 1 that means you are complementing the output so ta should be 1 okay the next the next uh, if the, my output is 0 1 then the next output should be next output should be this is our expectation that it should be 1 0 if the previous one is 1 0 then it is my expectation that the next will be 1 1 if the previous one is 1 1 then you see it is my expectation that the next stage will be 0 0 now how we can make it make this achieve this for that you have to set the value of t and tb okay so look at this 0 to 1 which will which will make this so you are going 0 to 1 that means you are complementing you are coming 1 to 0 you are complementing so t is 1 so any doubt till now if you are have any doubt you can say beforehand okay then i will explain more because the next stage may be may look more complicated more more difficult okay so if you have any doubt from here you can stop me and ask that okay so then you are ch not changing the output okay qb was one before and the current qb also one okay so it is not changing that means q a tb will be zero and it is again changing 0 to 1 that means ta will be 1 now look at this it is changing it is also changing both both output is changing so before qb was 1 now qb is 0 before qa was 1 now qa is 0 so to change that that is to complement the output the input at ta and tb should be this okay <coughs> now what i will do using this table using this table i will find the expression for ta tb that what should be the expression for ta such that on this input on this input it will give this qa dash qa plus as result i will find what should be the expression for tb such that in this input it will give this qb plus as my outputs okay now look at this ta is very easy all are one so ta should be one ta should be one always so in that case only it will get complemented every time look at this the qa input is always getting complemented each time so ta should be one what should be tb you can use kmap it is a larger for now i am not using kmap so because it's a smaller one so tb we just take one terms okay if you look at this this is nothing but q b bar q a okay and here you have another one which will making this which will make this q b q a 
so the expression for tb is qa qb bar plus qa qb which is equals to qa into qb plus qb bar so that is 0 plus 1 which is 1 so it will be qa so what will be the circuit the circuit will be like this ta equals to qa and tb equals to, sorry 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 So, TB is equals to QA. That means like this. And TA will be 1. Okay. This is how we build a synchronous counter. And this is not mandatorily that you have to give only this sequence at 0, 0. That is a counter type. You can find, you can do any random sequence. You can build counter even for 0, 0. 0 after that 2 after that 1 after that 3 1 then 3 you can also build counter like this using synchronous counter you are just the expression will change expression will change okay so i think this is clear okay so <clears throat> if this is counter so these two are very small topics that is one is ring counter in the ring counter you have flip flops here d flip flops you have d flip flops here D, let me give it name with C, D, B, and D, A. Okay. And obviously this will be Q, A, Q, B, Q, C. In this, you will understand like how shift register also works. This is not a shift register, but yeah, you will get the co concept. Okay this is clock this is clock so let's say the initial qa qb and qc was was zero zero uh, let's put it one here so one zero zero okay this is the let's say initial output okay what will be in the next clock cycle in the next clock in the next clock what will happen is that look at this qa was one okay this was zero this was zero that means in the next cycle the input the da will get zero because it is coming from here okay the one what was the output of da that will go to db which will make this as one and this zero will go to the input of dc which will make this again zero which is remains zero so that means the next output the da output will be zero so qa becomes zero it gets here one so it is shifted one one room and then again zero okay the next clock cycle what is the outputs here you have zero you have one you have zero so this one now will be transferred here because it is deep flip flop now input is one the output will be one so one now you have zero so you will have zero here and you have zero here so that will also come here so it will be zero zero one <coughs> now since this is one now it will now go into the in input to da again and in the next clock cycle again you will have one zero zero and it will go like this it will make the ring that's why it is called ring counter fine any doubt in this? Okay. So if someone asks what is the number of states, 
number of states number of states the means just the number of different combination here you have three combination okay and number of flip flops this is also three then can we say number of flip flops is equals to number of states yes we can say okay this will be always true okay this is all about ring counter now go to johnson counter which is look same i am not uh, okay let me go through the circuit Just don't think about the circuit drawing. Yeah. So you have again this here also. You have D, D flip flops, D flip flops, Q, D, Q, D, Q. Let's say this is A flip flop, B flip flop, C flip flop. Okay. And you have Q bar. So the inputs. Will be Q outputs initial output, let's say, are 0, 0, 0. Okay, QA, QB, QC. So let's say these are all 0, 0, 0. What will be the next in what will be in the next block? Now look at this here, D is connected to Q bar. Okay, QC bar. Okay, that means if QC is 0, QC bar is 1, that 1 will come here to DA, which will make QB to 1, uh, sorry, QA to 1. So, the next cycle QA will be 1 and QA was 0 before and it will be shifted to the B flip flop, which will make QB 0. Now, QB also was 0 which will be again shifted to <coughs> QC which will make QC as 0. So again in the next block cycle QC complement will be appended here and 1 this will be shifted here this will be shifted here. Now you are also getting the idea how the shift register working. Okay. In the next block cycle again QC complement look at QC it was 0. So the complement is 1 this one will be shifted here this one will be shifted over here okay in the next block cycle here it is one so the complement is zero this is shifted here shifted here in the next block cycle again you have one the complement is zero other things are shifted here one one step ahead in the next block cycle you can write it as zero 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 okay So I think this is clear. So thank you. Thank you all for attending the session and best of luck for your exam. Okay. So give your best. So do you if you have any question you can do or I will end the session if you need any suggestion or anything you can comment it. Thank you. Thank you.